Thank you. Um, as a relative newbie to um, the annual meeting of GTFCC, I thought I'd start by um, giving you a little bit of background about Welcome and our interests in cholera. So I can't have a presentation without a picture of Sir Henry Welcome. He's the reason we exist. Um, and we're a global charitable foundation who are politically and financially independent. And we exist to improve health by helping great ideas to thrive. We particularly support researchers, take on big health challenges, campaign for better science, and help everyone get involved in science and health research. We were established in 1936 under the will of Sir Henry Wellcome, um, and as well as a focus on research, we also have a strong focus on public engagement. We have our own museum, which is open to the public. We also have a growing policy um, strength and strong communication. So the I wanted to give you an idea of how we fund um, research and we have a primary fund and a reserve fund and these are just ways that we talk internally about um, funding our research. It's not two different schemes. Um, the primary fund is how we've been funding research since we began really um, and this involves both um, the breadth of biomedical research and social, social sciences um, and we're split into divisions science, innovations and culture and society. And the primary fund is how we um, is our classic response mode schemes, where the the great research questions, the great ideas, come from the communities. This fund also um, supports our institutes. We have certain welcome centres, um, our Africa and Asia programmes, the Sanger and Crick. And this is this will continue. This won't change. This is the core of what we do and how we do it. In the last three or four years, we realised that we could do more than this um, uh, investigator-initiated approach. Um, and that's where the idea of the Reserve Fund came, where we wanted to be more directive and more strategic in the way that we fund research. And we now have priority areas where we bring together elements of basic translational research with public engagement, policy and communications to have a greater impact on health. We currently have um, a few priority areas in vaccines, I'm sure you're glad to hear, also in AMR, diversity and inclusion, education, more recently snake bites, so a really diverse interest base. And the, these priority areas um, are really to drive significant progress or change over five to ten years. So I lead the vaccines priority area, um, which is in now in year three, and we have two key outcomes, which are really high level, really basic, which are to develop new and better vaccines, and also to en enable the better use of vaccines. And we do this through specific strategic areas. And I just want to highlight one to you, um, which is to optimize implementation with evidence. And we're starting with cholera. And um, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about how we have been supporting cholera work throughout Welcome, because it's not just in the priority area. We are, as I said, open to all areas of biomedical research, so at any time anyone can, can apply or come to us with a concept note on elements of cholera research, and depending on whether we have certain guidelines for certain schemes, so we'll have a discussion about what scheme might be most appropriate. But to give you an example, in our science teams, we support um, the Sanger Institute. And recently, some genomics research showed that the pandemic waves of cholera originated in the Bay of Bengal. We also um, support different individuals and investigators um, in certain areas of ecology and epidemiology of cholera. Secondly, our innovations team um, has a uh, joint venture with Merck to support the Hilleman Labs, and they have been developing a heat-stable, simplified cholera vaccine. And then more recently in the priority area, this is where our um, relationship with Dominique and the Global Task Force has been strengthening over the last couple of years, because our interests align with the Global Task Force, and really what we want to to do is support research to target um, cholera control efforts, working with different partners. And this is to have impact on policy and practice through research. 
So what have we done so far? How have we started? Last summer, um, we facilitated and hosted um, the working groups to develop an interim research agenda. This was really a great starting point, and I've heard over the last day or so from different people that those working groups have now developed those research agendas in more detail and, and started to think really about what the priorities are. Um, and, and that's just been fantastic to hear. The, um, the interim research agenda really guided our call for proposals, which we had last year with um, DFID. And we now have 11 research projects which have been supported to investigate different elements of cholera prevention and control. And although this is the vaccine's priority area, we acknowledge and recognise that the research is all interrelated. So we've supported areas in modelling and resource allocation, OCV, genomics, epidemiology, as well as WASH and diagnostic tests. And the goal here is really, as I was saying, to, for the research to be linked um, to impact on policy and practice. So what next? Looking forward, um, so we've been listening to what we've heard from people in the room, um, and there was really the recognition that there would be great value in connecting research and policy practice to ensure that the research has as much impact as possible. Um, and, and this is where we've, um, with the help of Elizabeth and Jen in my team, we have a meeting tomorrow looking at cholera research and practice. And really this is to continue those conversations which have been growing over years, to seed future collaborations and bring cholera research and policy implementation communities closer, and really discuss how the upcoming research can improve practice and vice versa, how practice can inform research. Thank you. <laughs>